Would you acknowledge that your scientific training was the product of your culture's conditioning? You presumably went to university or whatever. Yeah, it, it's a particular way your mind has been conditioned to interpret your experience. Yes. Okay, so just put that model on one side and use a different criteria to explain your experience. And the criteria being stay rigorously with your experience and try to describe what you're actually experiencing. What I'm trying to do is to try to get you to refer to your direct experience before you filter it through your conventional materialistic scientific education. Would you agree that all you know is experience? Yes. Would you ex agree that all experience takes place in your mind? Yes. What validity is there then to your belief that there is something outside mind? There is validity, there is something outside the mind. Can you point now to something in your experience that is outside mind? Well, like, uh, am I aware it's outside of my mind? No, That's no. why I get so confused. No, no. Be being aware is the essential nature of your mind. The essential nature of your mind is its knowing quality. Whatever you are experiencing, you are knowing it. True. If you're experiencing the lamp, you are knowing it. True. If you are deeply depressed, you are knowing it. Yes. If you are walking with your wife in the park, you are knowing it. <coughs> so knowing is the essential ingredient of the mind, irrespective of the content of the mind. Okay. If you're having a near-death experience, you are knowing it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. If you're having breakfast, you are knowing it. Yes. So knowing, that's what I mean by awareness, knowing or being aware, is the essential ingredient. When I say the essential ingredient, I mean that part of the mind that cannot be removed from it. Close your eyes. Okay, that the perception you were having a few minutes ago has vanished. Yeah? Yes. Now open your eyes again. A new perception appears. Mm -hmm. So a perception is not essential to the mind. Perceptions are coming and going all the time. Mm -hmm. Thoughts are coming and going all the time. Feelings are coming and going. But the only element of the mind that is essential to it, that cannot be removed from it, is its knowing quality. Now, have you ever had an experience, or could you ever have an experience, or has anybody ever had an experience that is independent of this knowing quality of the mind? That's not possible. What legitimacy is there therefore, to the belief that there is something called an outside world that stands with its own independent existence separate from knowing. When you yourself have just acknowledged that nobody could ever experience such a world, that is a world independent of knowing. I think you made a very, very strong argument. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't refute your argument at this moment, but my, my background tells me the, 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 the objective world, like you describe it, okay, the object of weather, even including uh, certain feelings, the objective world that we all live in and we all talk about, and they have a certain regularity to it. I know what your conditioning tells oh, sorry. you. Sorry. <laughs> We're all very familiar with it. <laughs> but. Your argument 
that the appearance of the outside world has a regularity to it is uh, you are using that argument in defense of your old model. But I'm not denying that there is a regularity to appearances. But why do you use the fact that there is a regularity to the world as proof that it is stuff made out of matter? Why could there not still be a regularity to the way mind unfolds within consciousness? After all, your own thoughts unfold within your own mind and there is a regularity to them. So we know from our own experience that the content of mind unfolds according to patterns of regularity. Why couldn't the image called the world which appears in the great mind, the infinite mind called consciousness, also appear with regularity. In other words, why do you think that regularity is proof of your materialistic model rather than an inevitable outcome of the consciousness-only model? Again, you made a very strong argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, can I make a suggestion? It's only uh, Monday morning. <coughs> As you say, I have made a very strong argument. And my argument is based entirely on experience that you and I can validate for ourselves. So I'm not telling you something that I have any special access to. I haven't said anything this morning that I have knowledge of that you don't have. And that conflicts with your deeply held beliefs. And so now you have a problem. Mm -hmm. I do have a problem. You, yeah, and that's, that's <coughs> very I wouldn't good. be here if I don't have Perfect. a problem. <laughs> but I, I, I'm just bringing the problem into sharp focus. <laughs> so you have your materialistic paradigm, which we've all been brought up with, <coughs> and you have the evidence of experience. And they don't agree with each other. You're here because already you have intuited the discrepancy between belief and experience. And, and I'm now shining a bright light on that, bringing, formulating that crisis. Okay. And I suggest already we've come quite a long way this morning. Okay. Ponder this afternoon when you're out walking or whatever ponder the conversation we've had so far and it has many implications to it I would encourage you not to take anything I say as truthful unless you can test it in your own experience test it in your experience the testing of these statements in your experience will take you down avenues avenues of reasoning and through thought experiments and at some point you will you'll keep coming to crossroads and your old conditioning will come on and say turn left mm -hmm. and your experience will say turn right and you'll not be sure which way to go I will always represent experience the voice of experience okay. I don't want to convince you of anything apart from one thing I want to convince you of one thing in fact I want to convince you to trust your experience, to be like a true scientist. Only trust that which can be validated in experience. 